Our first speaker for this evening is an astronomy professor at the University of Michigan. Please welcome Karen Schrock. Can you hear me? Mm-hmm. All right. Take it away. So this is the Hubble Space Telescope. It orbits Earth. It's above the Earth's atmosphere. And it goes around Earth once every 90 minutes or so. It's not the biggest telescope we've ever built. But because of its location above the atmosphere, it can take beautiful, sharp, high-resolution images of space. In its 25 years out there, it has shown us images of planets in our own solar system, allowing us to really study things like we've never or never able to do before. It's taken images of objects in our own galaxy, like star forming regions, other stars like our sun, only far away, beautiful high resolution colors. Uh, it also took images of other galaxies, like our own, maybe spiral galaxies out there in space that we can really study and understand what they're made of, understand what we are made of, understand what the gas and stars and dust in those galaxies look like. But when I look at an image like this, um, I'm very impressed by this foreground galaxy, but I also look at all those little itty-bitty guys in the background. And this is a really amazing thing that Hubble can do. All those background galaxies right behind this beautiful foreground uh, guy are all galaxies like our own. Each of them has hundreds of billions of stars in them. Those tiny little specks of light that you see are each a whole galaxy. So this is just in the background of some other galaxies that we're looking at. Imagine what would happen if we actually tried to observe them. Every year, the director of the Hubble Space Telescope gets to use a portion of the space telescope time to observe whatever they want. So he or she can point the telescope at my grandmother's left foot if that was scientifically interesting. Uh, in 1996, they decided to point the telescope at a blank piece of sky somewhere near Ursa Major and look for a very long time and see what's out there if you really, really use this telescope for its capacity, full capacity. So they carefully chose a piece of sky that has absolutely nothing in it. No stars, no galaxies, no beautiful nebulae, absolutely nothing, a dark piece of sky. And they pointed the telescope at this dark piece of sky for a full 10 days and nights. And the image that we got after observing this blank piece of sky for 10 days was absolutely breathtaking. In this tiny, tiny piece of sky, we can see thousands of galaxies. Each of those galaxies, remember, is like our own Milky Way galaxy. It has billions of stars. Some of them may have planets around them. Maybe in some of those planets there are people like you and me, sitting in a lecture hall, listening to a talk from some astronomer telling them how awesome their space telescope is. Um, and we've repeated this exercise many times since then. We looked at a few other blank pieces of sky for longer with better uh, cameras, with sharper instruments, with better capabilities. And we're seeing deeper and deeper and deeper into fainter and fainter galaxies. And one of the most amazing things about this is because light travels at the speed of light. If you look at a galaxy that is 10 billion years, light years away, you are looking at this galaxy as it looked 10 billion years ago. So if I'm looking at this picture here, I am seeing the universe as it looked when it was a bare, a mere baby, just as it started creating the stars and the galaxies that are around us today. So we're looking back in time. 
if we're looking really, really, really far away. Um, the Hubble Space Telescope turned 25 years old this May. It is still out there in space, taking beautiful images of what's out there for us, for me and my colleagues, to try and understand and decipher the mysteries of the universe every single day. Thank you.